Elisha heals Naaman. Naaman was captain of the army of the Syrians, and he was a great man among the followers of the king of Syria, and very respected. Now the Syrians were the enemies of Israel. He was a great soldier, but he was a leper. He had this skin disease that was going to kill him. Now, the Syrians had attacked the Israelites, and they had brought back as a captive from the land of Israel a little girl, and she was the servant to Naaman's wife. Now, probably, the Syrians had killed her mummy and daddy and her brothers and sisters, and she was taken away into captivity. And she said to her mistress, But why didn't they then kill her? Well, because they wanted her, because she was a young girl, to be their servant, their slave. But why? Well, because it was, uh, she was maybe a nice girl, and they thought, yeah, she's a hard-working girl, let's have her as a slave. She said to her mistress, that's Naaman's wife, I so wish that my lord were with the prophet who's in Samaria, that's Elisha, for he would cure him of his leprosy. Now she said that, by faith, because in the New Testament we're told that there were many lepers in Israel in the days of Elisha, but none of them were cured, only Naaman, the Syrian. So this girl was very forgiving, it seems. She wished the best for the captain of the Syrian army, even though it was a Syrian army that had taken her into captivity and taken her away from her family and perhaps killed her family. So that's a great example of loving your enemies. When the king of Syria heard what the girl had spoken, he said, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. Like David was very forgiving with Saul. He was, and again that all turned out really to his blessing. So the king of Syria says, I'm going to send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left with the letter and took ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of clothing. He came to the king of Israel. And the letter said, When you get this letter, I ask you to cure Naaman of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he got very angry. He tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive? Why does this man think that I can cure someone of leprosy? Seems like he's picking an argument with me. So you see that it is only God who can cure in the end. And it's God who makes sick and it's God who cures. So it's not true that God gives us all the nice things that God, let's say, makes you better. But there's some evil being called Satan that makes you ill. That's not the case. All things come from God. So when Elisha, the prophet of God, heard what the king of Israel had said and his reaction, he told the king, let this man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariot and stood at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha didn't go out to see him. He just sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the river Jordan seven times and your flesh will be healed and you'll be well. Naaman was angry went away. He thought to himself, surely he, he would have done something dramatic, at least he would have come out to me, instead of sending a messenger out to me, and call on the name of his God, and put his hand maybe on the place where my leprosy is and cure me. He tells me to go and wash in that little river Jordan. Aren't Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus in Syria, better than all the rivers of Israel? Shouldn't I wash in them and be cured? But Naaman's servant said to him, If the prophet Elisha had asked you to do some really difficult thing, wouldn't you have done it? How much more is it better to obey him when he just says, Wash in Jordan and be cured? Then Naaman went and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, just as Elisha had said. So you see that he was quite humble in that he listened to his servant girl, who was the servant of his wife, and now he listens again to his servants. And we should always be willing to listen to advice and not 
think that we are right and no one can tell us anything. So Naaman dipped himself seven times in the river Jordan, and his flesh became like the flesh of a little child, and he was cured. He went back to Elisha, him and all the men with him, and he stood before him and he said, Now I know that there is no God in the earth apart from in Israel. So can I give you a present to show my gratitude? But Elisha said, As the God lives, I will accept nothing. Go in peace. So Naaman went on his way. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, thought to himself, Huh, my master, Elisha, refused to accept the presents that Naaman wanted to give. I'll run after him and get something for myself. So Gehazi followed Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from his chariot and greeted him and asked him if everything was well. Gehazi said, Everything is well, but my master Elisha sent me to tell you that two young men from the sons of the prophets have just arrived from Mount Ephraim. Uh, will you please give them a talent of silver and two changes of, of clothes? Naaman said, Sure, take two talents of silver. He gave them to two of his servants, and they carried him. They carried them for Gehazi. When they came near to home, Gehazi took the bags with the clothes in and hid them in the house and told the men to go. Then he went and stood before Elisha, his master. Elisha asked him, Where have you been, Gehazi? Gehazi lied to Elisha. He said, I have not been anywhere. Elisha said to him, Didn't I go in spirit with you? When the man left his chariot and met you? Is this the time to receive money and clothes and vineyards, sheep, oxen and servants? So the leprosy of Naaman, from which he was cured, will pass to you and to your children forever. And Gehazi went out from the presence of Elisha, a leper as white as snow. So you see there that seeking for nice things can lead you to spiritual destruction. It's called being covetous, thinking, oh, if only I had that gold, if only I had those clothes, wouldn't it be so nice, that dress, that jacket? But that is not the way to true happiness. What God wants is us to be humble, like the little girl who said to her mistress, if my master Naaman would go to Israel, the prophet Elisha, I believe, could cure him. So again you see how God works with young people. God worked with that servant girl. She might have been really quite young. But God worked through her. And God will work with you as well.